All right, welcome back to Outmouse Labs. My name is Penny, and I'm glad you're here. So this is going to be part two of our building a Pong clone in Dragon Ruby series. And today what we're going to be doing is we are going to get the player controls and movement working. We are going to develop the ability for the ball to bounce off the top and bottom, and we are going to develop the ability for the ball to know if someone has scored and update the score. Okay, so let's jump right in. Let's start this time with a demo of what it looks like. I'm going to do is refresh it. So it'll take a second. There it goes. So our ball can bounce, and when it goes off the right side, the computer scores. Right now, we don't have it bouncing off the paddle, but this is the basics. And if we are were to change the direction, and right now that is just hard coded. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll change it to a minus 4, because remember minus is going left. It'll reset in a minute, and now it's going to the left, and our player score, uh, scores. All right, let's see how we did it. All right, so we've added several things to our defaults. We've added an args.state.score. So again, state is a blob or box that holds data that's persistent. We set it to zero initially. We set the computer score to a zero initially. We set plain to true. Uh, this will allow us to make a menu later. We set the game won to false and the game lost to false. Okay. Next, on our ball, we've added a couple of things. We've, st we've added an acceleration for X and an acceleration for Y. Right now, I've just got that set to minus four for both for demonstration purposes. Okay. Up in our score labels, we have changed the text to args.state.score, which represents this, and args.state.compScore, which represents this. This way, it's actually going to update our score instead of just having a flat zero value. OK. Next up, down here, we have created a function called ball movement. So that's def ball underscore movement. It takes in args. And we tell it if this, the x of our ball what we want to do is we want our the x of our ball to accelerate based on the x acceleration. We want the y of our ball to accelerate based on the y acceleration. So we say if the y of our ball is greater than or equal to the height of our window minus the height of our ball, or our uh, the y of our ball is less than or equal to zero, we want to flip the y acceleration by multiplying by minus 1. When you multiply by minus 1, it becomes the opposite, right? So that's what causes it to bounce. Else if, so if this isn't true, but this is, um, our ball's x is less than 0, meaning off the left screen, uh, um, then our player score is going to run. That's a function. If it's off the right side of the screen by being the grid dot w minus the width of the ball, we're going to have the computer score. So these are just functions. I put them above the ball movement. I don't think that's necessary in Ruby, but it's what I'm used to doing that I don't want to call a function until after it's been declared and set up. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, our player score, which is referenced if it's less than or equal to zero for the ball's x, Add the score adds plus one to the score for our player, resets our ball's x to the center, our ball's y to the center, and it tells our ball to move straight left towards the player's paddle because in Pong, whoever scores, the ball comes their way. Um, we say that if, so unless the score for the player is 10, don't do anything more. But if it is 10, set plain to false. That'll take us to our pause menu and then set game one so we'll be able to put text saying congratulations you won the computer score is almost the same it's going to give the computer a score it's going to reset the ball back to the middle and it's going to set the acceleration to move straight to the right towards the computer if the score for the computer is less than 10 nothing happens but if it is 10 then it's going to set playing to false and set game lost to true so we can display different text so it's a lot of functionality, really, in just a few lines of code. And when we put it all together, we have our bounces and our score condition. Next up, we'll be setting it up so the ball will bounce off the paddles. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Please consider liking and subscribing if you like this content. 
and feel free to take a look at this code, make it your own, or use any of the assets or code as you see fit. I will be posting those to the final video. All right. Thank you.